Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, December 28th, 2013. That's right, December, believe it or not, is coming to a close. Three days after the big Christ Mass. The pagan Christmas, the uh, uh, this, this, the uh, holiday of Saturnalia, and now we have uh, New Year's Eve coming up. Please, people, be safe. Don't drive drunk. Get a. I know there's no designated sober drivers. <laughs> Actually, they should stay off the road at night, that night because it's going to be cold. If you're going to go to a wild party, Spend a little extra money because they rip you off anyway during New Year's Eve. Spend a little extra money and uh, stay in a hotel room. You know, just be safe. That's all I have to say. Um, they're very strict now with drunk driving. Uh, New Year's Eve is uh, early next week, right? I believe New Year's Eve is Tuesday. Okay, so this will be the New Year's Eve uh, uh, special show for uh, uh, saying goodbye, saying bye-bye to uh, 2013 and wel mm. welcoming in 2014. Mm -hmm. So this will be our New Year's special. Um, no, I do not have that annoying noisemaker, but I will make plenty of noise, believe me. We will make plenty of noise to make up for it. Uh, oh, by the way, what does uh, old Lang Syne mean? Old Lang Syne? I have no idea. I saw some woman singing it yesterday. I gotta figure out what that means, and I have to research what Erin Bralis. I mean, Erin Bra means for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Erin Bra, isn't that something like a... Like a greeting? Like a, the, the don't let the road come up to meet you or something? Don't let the door hit you in the ass? No, of course. Which is what should happen to the to the Republican Congress uh, if they get voted out, which we hope they do in 2014. Uh, well, not if it's left up to them with their voting uh, restrictions and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they want to make it so that they win, uh, baby. Not on any policies. Finagling. Because they have no policies. So they have to finagle. They're going to finagle so uh, the... Um, the elderly, uh, the handicapped, minorities, black, uh, white, people women. from people from you know po folk in America, po folk will not be able to uh, not only get to the polls but to uh, to make it more difficult for the average ham and egger to be able to vote to discourage yeah, they can them. Stand in line for eleven hours. Be, right, because they know they know that low income people traditionally if they have half a brain vote democrat yeah they know they that. like those crumbs yeah all you get is really crumbs from the social programs they're not really designed to work to get the job done right, lift you out of poverty no 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 now before i begin i would like to i would like to formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle like I do every week. Why do I blow it? Because I like Because I can. Because I can and I like to blow it. You got a problem with that? I was always a, a, a seafarer at heart. Uh, when I was a kid, I always loved uh, maritime subjects, uh, the sea, boating, fishing, seafood, and I also loved uh, Japanese monster movies like Godzilla and Rodan and Ghidra and Mothra. And, you know, I was infatuated by those two things. And of course, Kung Fu Theater every Saturday afternoon. You know, all the old movies from Hong Kong. Chilla Theater. Channel 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, low-budget horror, yes. What was the guy's name? Zachary. Remember Zachary? Zachary? Yeah, that vampire Chilla, who, who ran the Chiller Theater. He, in other words, yeah, he, exactly. he exactly ran Chiller Theater? Yeah, he, or his he, name was the, was he was the master of ceremonies. And you sure that was his name? Zachary, Not yes. Zachary. Zachary. It's a stupid name. It's a vampire name. 
I swear, I've been seeing it. it if, if you think you've heard all of the dumb names that there ever was, guess again. I keep on reading people's first names, and they're absolutely ridiculous. They, they, they sound stupid, those poor kids what they had to go through in school after their parents did that to them. Back to the piping. Hey, that, that was a good one. Arr, arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, what sir? What did we decide was the name of it? Starship Censored. Thank you. Starship Censored, named after our newsletter, which is the very backbone of the organization and why we are here. Okay, I just want to tell everybody, if you want to really sink your teeth into uh, what we're, we are all about, aside from getting your free annual subscription to Censored with your gift to support this work at NewsletterCensored.com, what what you can do also is join our Facebook uh, page and group called Progressive Discussions. That is www.facebook.com backslash Progressive Discussions. And there are tons of valuable information there. Please go there, okay? Very important. All right, now I have one topic in my monologue but I need the assistance and the interpretation of the great um, Reverend Dr. William J. J. Eisenman, who is here right now at the Newsletter Censored uh, Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. This is uh, concerning uh, the very well-loved Pope Francis. Ah. Uh, the Pope. Pope. The Pope who has been the people's pope the people's pope who has been saying things that directly relate to what is exactly in the bible what, what is actually in the bible about uh about uh the rich being selfish and greedy and stingy and and about the rich must give to the poor and the rich must help the poor and 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 that capitalism is pretty much uh the devil's economics and he, the Pope has been very vocal about this subject. I never heard any other Pope do this. And this is what has made him the People's Pope and has boosted his popularity tremendously as Popes go. But I think he might have slipped up this time. Uh-oh. And Dr. Bill is going to straighten me out and he's going to tell me if I'm, my hunch was right. Ooh. Now... Dr. Reverend Dr. Bill has told me that in the end times, which we are living in, uh, I think we're under the white horse of the apocalypse right now, more or less. We've always been. The false... Uh, We've been for a long time. The false religion, false prophets, the fa mm. false church. Okay. Dr. Bill has told me when Satan comes to us, he comes to us as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm going to read what the Pope said where I think he slipped up towards the end. Mm -hmm. And you tell me if this sounds like an angel of light who has won the hearts of the masses, mm -hmm. but might be a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Wow! Might be, I said. Okay. Alleged. Alleged. I quote Pope Francis. The church no longer believes in a literal hell where people suffer. This doctrine is incompatible with the infinite love of God. God is not a judge, but a friend and a lover of humanity. Now, this doesn't sound like the end times to me. Now, <laughs> yes, there is no Dante's Inferno mentioned in the Bible as being hell there is only a lake of fire. But for him to say that the doctrine of, uh, of, this, uh, of punishment is incompatible with this 
with the infinite love of, jo of, jo of God. God is not a judge, which I don't know, man. Not at this time. Not at this time, but a friend and a lover of humanity. Now, that doesn't sound like we're a bunch of grasshoppers at all. Now, what do you? What is your well, opinion on this statement? Time and time again, that the only people being judged at this time are the elect. Those who have already uh, uh, become or are going to become right. the 144,000, the spirit beings that will rule with Jesus on the earth from Jerusalem. Yeah for the millennium. Right. Okay? Right. So, those are the ones under judgment today. Nobody else, because everybody else is cut off from God since the Garden of Eden. We have been cut off and allowed to go our own way and make our own politics, religion, education, business, whatever. Yeah. We've been allowed to do all our mistakes so that in the end God will be able to say, see, I told you to do it my way and nobody will have any, uh, no comeback. Well, you didn't warn us. Well, you didn't tell us. Well, there'll be no because there you go. You had your own way to do it. I told you go go this way you didn't do it so that's it but judgment is not for anybody the vast majority of humans today none no judgment that's why mr. Phil which we will be reading about mr. Phil Robertson from the duck dynasty was incorrect when he said that the gays the bestialists and whores and etc are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. No, they're not. But they're not under judgment today. Okay. So if God is not judging, why are we? So po the Pope's statement about us being a friend and, and him being a lover of humanity and... Uh, no. God, Jesus will be ruling with a rod of iron. Does that sound like a buddy to you? No. No. You mean the second coming? The second coming, yeah, a rod of iron, so that there's going to be, so there's going to be some people who are going to be uh, have their backs up in the air, and going to be needed to be ruled by a rod of iron. So it seems like uh, Pope Francis is a little too concerned with his popularity, and he's uh, can't, uh, sugarcoating um, life as a Christian in the end times. Well, the Catholic Church said many many moons ago that the Catholic Church is above the Bible so it doesn't have to obey the Bible it obeys its own doctrines above its own traditions what did I put on Facebook above last night above mark 7 verses 7 through 9 I noticed that thank you above the Bible doesn't that sound like a violation of the last paragraph right. of the book of revelations but but it has always been like that Right in the beginning, before the printing press, etc., and then after the printing press, the Roman Catholic Church was very instrumental in keeping the Bible from the masses. Right. They, if you were to hear anything from the Bible, you had to go to church and they, hear it. They also kept science from the masses. That too. They did not like uh, Galileo or Copernicus, or no, they didn't. Uh, they gave. Uh, oh, they had a fit when Martin Luther started giving speeches. Yeah, well, they conflicted with their traditions, their ideas. At that particular Galileo's time, the Roman Catholic Church believed that the sun revolved around the earth. The earth was the center of the universe. So Galileo said, well, wait a minute now. Uh, it's not like that. The earth is revolving around the sun. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not literally the center of the universe, the Earth, it's... The Earth is not even in the center of the galaxy. It is on a fringe of this galaxy, the Milky Way. It is in a decent area between the Sun and etc. A perfect area, by the way, for life. 
But it's not the center of the galaxy. No, it just so happened to be that the Earth is the exact perfect position from the sun where it's not too cold and it's not too hot and and it supports life and there's an atmosphere. I mean, uh, it just happens to be that way. You know, by design possibly. Uh, but Milky Way is just a, uh, a, an, a mere amoeba in the whole scheme of things in the universe. It, uh, I mean, the Andromeda galaxy is supposedly much larger than the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, and, uh, and there are millions of other galaxies. Billions. Billions. So, I mean, that's you know. A, that's a question that, uh, you know, people, people who tend to accept God and this, that, and the other thing, and blah, 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 boom, blah, 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 blah. They never get around to answering the question. These spirit beings, they dwell together in eternity. They made angels. What the hell do they need with physical stuff? A universe. What the hell did they need it for? They didn't need it for nothing. Right. There had to be a reason. Well, the physical the creation of physical stuff. The physical stuff, I think, is tied into after Adam and Eve were thrown out of paradise. There had to be a a a way of life that created unpleasantness. You know what I mean? The universe was created long before Adam and Eve. Long before humans. So would you say the material world was a, a proving testing grounds for God or proving the, pr the physicality is in how God is creating himself, reproducing. He tried it with the angels and it didn't work. And now Satan and one third of his angels are up there totally corrupt, perverted, and nothing can be done about it because they are immortal. Yeah, because of selfishness and vanity. But they are immortal. Which I and They Rand's shall now live on yeah. in their corruption and perversion. All God can do now is place them somewhere where they will be no hurt to anyone else. So God discovered that if he created the reproduce now through physicality, through humans, if they indeed became corrupt and perverted, they could be killed, burned up, and never bother anybody ever again, you see. And that's why the universe. It's plainly stated in the Bible. The creation waits, awaits the sons of God. The universe is out there because at, at, at a particular time in the future there will be more gods. <coughs> and they too will have their brooding areas to raise humans to reproduce. God wants to populate the universe with gods. That's in the Bible. Yeah. It's in a but we're all going to heaven. And we're going to play harps all day. And, 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 and according to the right-wing fundamentalist evangelicals, you know, we have an immortal soul that flies out of your body and is, is quickly judged. Uh, and then there's the... Uh, the uh, this... Um, idea of a type of purgatory that they believe in, a waiting room, so to speak, so on and so on. Well, meanwhile, everybody that dies rots in the ground, and turns to dust, and awaits resurrection and judgment. Well, the spirit of man in humans is up with God if you're dead. The body the worms crawl in and the worms crawl out. Do, 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 do. But the spirit is up there. But the spirit is, is unconscious, and right? The spirit is up there and it awaits a resurrection. But when it awaits, is it in a conscious state? No. Okay. 
No. Isn't it? Is, isn't it? Is it is dead. Isn't it peculiar how the reason that Satan and his one third of the angels rebelled and fell is pretty much the same reason, the, the same uh, 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 um, way of thinking, the same mentality of the right wing Republican conservatives today. Selfishness as a virtue, greed is good, vanity, selfishness. You know, it, it ties into today's Republicans. Well, Satan wanted to do things his way. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, jealousy, hunger for power, uh, vanity, selfishness. This is this describes Republicans to the T. Well, in in the physical nature, it 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 all stems from Nimrod, Babylon, Babylon. Babylon yeah. Nimrod, the first king. Yeah. The big stud. He wanted to be the, the, the great hunter. He wanted to he wanted to be, you know, everything. Yeah, but all of God. Yeah, but all the kings in ancient times wanted to be revered as demigods. Yeah. Well, demigods. Yeah. That's the point. You know, by the way, it's very mild outside. Uh, yes, it is. We need this right now. It came on, didn't it? What does that tell you? That means you got the thermostat too high. No, it means that the temperature is going down. Okay, now let us, not lettuce as in romaine lettuce, but let us, oh hold on. Honeymoon sandwich, let us. Speaking of honeymoon sandwiches, the, the Honeymooners New Year's Eve Marathon will be uh, commencing. I can't wait. Reverend Bill, can I please have back my cane? Okay, now let us sink our teeth into these readings. And I'm very dry. And yeah. I can wait my tea. What time? What the hell time we got? Oh, you got time for one before your little break. Well, no break. It, 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 yeah, it's on the water. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so you, I'm very thirsty. So, so, so we're oh, yeah. we're gonna go straight through. You're just going to receive, you're going to ask me to bring your tea. In case no one knew it, Well, December 25th was Christmas. Yeah, sure. It is the day that Christians all over the world celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We believe that God became flesh and dwelt among us in order for us, among other things, to know Him and His great love. That is what Christians celebrate on Christmas Day. However, the Records Editorial, that's our local big newspaper, did not even remotely touch on the meaning of Christmas. No, they, they touched on the meaning of shopping. Instead, it focused on that, on not offending non-Christians. Oh boy. Well, you, you uh, wrote, out of respect for others, we are careful about saying it is Christmas Day. What? Yeah, but don't others mention the names of their holidays when it comes, when it, when it comes time? Other people don't say happy holidays. Have you written the same thing in the past about yeah. such holidays as Hanukkah, Ramadan, Kwanzaa? Each of those observances are celebrated by a particular group of people. What others do on Christmas Day is their business. But that does not change the significance of the day for us as Christians. Yeah, it's funny how Christians have to always walk on eggshells with everybody. And it's the same thing with, with progressive liberals. They have to walk on eggshells. I'm sick of it. It's but bullshit. The gentleman started out with a wrong premise. Yeah. The 25th of December 
has nothing to do with Jesus Christ's birth. It's the winter solstice. Nothing. Saturnalia, right? The winter solstice. Saturnalia Brumalia. Brumalia. Yeah. Has to do with sun worship. Which goes back to Baal, right? Baal, or yes. Maybe, who knows, maybe before Baal. Moloch, Baal, they're all the sun. And sun worship was the first, right. if you want to call them religion. And the and the because the sun brought warmth, and the and and it was the light, the great light from the, the light sky, the just like the moon was the goddess of the night, because it was the light up in the heavens, up, not down, but up. Um, um, well, is this also the reason why all tall buildings all over the world are shaped like a phallic uh, obelisk? Fertility. Is that, is that related to Baal also, the obelisk? Fertility religions. Okay. Fertility. Mainly associated with goddess worship, by the way. Fertility, goddess. Fertility, yeah. yeah. Religions. But the point again is, the 25th of December has nothing to do with Jesus Christ's birth. So why is that gentleman upset? Amy in the first place. Yeah, it has nothing to he's do with right. He's worshipping a pagan holiday, which has nothing to do with his God. Some of these morons are offended if somebody looks at the fictitious, uh, obese Santa Claus as anything but a white man with a with a white long white beard and white hair and dressed in his pajamas it, it, you know it, it, if you say well I see Santa we're talking about idiots that, that actually treat Santa you know like he was alive like like, like looking at Homer Simpson like he was a real person uh, oh oh Santa's this Santa's brown Santa's black oh Fox News is saying Santa's white well and they're, they're arguing arguing over a fictitious character that was probably designed by the big American retail industry along with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer just to get you to part with all your money and then some. And then you get the point of it is what the hell does Santa Claus have to do with Christmas, the birth of Jesus? It has nothing to do with Santa Claus, what, he came like 1700 years later? Saint Nick and, the, and, 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 and that other guy. Just, and look, yeah. you know, Nick is an old name for the devil. And Santa rearranged, rearranged the letters of the name Santa. And what do you get? You get Atnes. No, you get Satan. Atnes. Backwards. That? Well, yeah. rearrange them, I guess you could say. Well, the point, the point is that there, there are definitely pagan, proven pagan um, uh, traditions. The history of everything to do with the Christmas we know today is directly associated with paganism, whether it be Babylon or whatever, uh, has nothing to do with Jesus, the Bible, and the birth of Christ. Um, and these people are arguing and fighting over December 25th. Yeah, stupidity. And they claim to be religious. It's the right-wingers and Fox News that, that fight about this crap. This crap, this nonsense. Yeah, and Megyn Kelly, the one who brought it up, I'm a serious news journalist. Megyn, uh, uh, the, uh, the witch, uh, the, the Christine right- Christine O'Donnell. The right-wing witch, oh, that's Christine O'Donnell. And Ann Coulter, I call her the Medusa, the Gorgon. They're all they're all part of a coven. All these uh, conservative chicks. They're all part of the right wing coven of witches. A much hyped protest for the right to go topless on a Rio de Janeiro's beaches fell flat on Saturday. You mean 
po politicians in Brazil want to stop uh, uh, nude bathing? Poppers. Maybe you think a lot of uh, a lot of horny men are like uh, hitting on them too much? What's going on? I don't know what is so horny about nudism. What? What? It's a brony. What do you just take a look at somebody with a hot looking body and, 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 and all I have to say is boing in a nudist setting noing Hold on. We need a real boing. We need a real boing. Here we go. Okay. You probably can't hear. I'll wait till this contraption book turns off. Wait, you know, boing. That's it. The hormones are flying. Are you kidding me? When only a handful of women bared their chests for the movement. More than a hundred photojournalists stampeded across the golden sands of Ipanema Beach. Ipanema. The girl from Ipanema, Ipanema goes walking? When the first woman took off her bikini top and showed her Ipanemas to flout Brazilian law. Good for her. Just three or four other women joined in. Saturday's protest is the latest chapter in a debate over just how much skin is too much on Rio's beaches. Protest organizers told media they were responding to a November incident in which actress Cristina Flores yeah. was set upon by municipal guards after she removed her shirt. During a photo shoot on Ipanema Beach. They came at me immediately, and there were three, uh, four of them, more than one per breast. And after you hear the loud of men, then you hear this. Uh, I do not think. Get it? I do not think that Sarah Palin would be coming in to defend those women. Sarah Palin, no. Because, that is immoral. Because, uh... Showing your breasts. Hypocritical... On even in the beat. Hypocritical conservatives, um, they, they're holier than thou when it comes to some things, but that when it comes to, uh, corruption and, 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 and uh, unethical crimes of uh, acquiring money, ill-gotten gains, they think that's fine. I am reading right now a book by a, obviously a conservative, who blames the Wall Street financial crisis on government. Oh, really? They're not Wall Street oh. at all. Oh, so, so that means G.W. Bush um, was kind of... Oh, um, no, it goes back to... It goes back to uh, Clinton. Uh, oh, it's the, Clinton's fault. Oh, yes, the government. But it's not was, Bush's fault. The government told banks to give loans to poor slobs that couldn't pay the money back. We need people in Acorn. Everybody did it. They wanted the poor to have their own homes. Come on. So it was it had nothing to do with underhanded ta no. tactics. No, not greed. By Wall Street. Nothing like that. No, it was the government's fault because we wanted to get people who could not afford them into homes. And why, why, I wonder why people call the organization the Onion Spin Doctors. I notice uh, Republicans like to call, isn't that a, a liberal publication? Uh, yes, it is the Onion. Actually, it's, uh, B, it's from uh, Britain. Really? I believe the Onion is from Britain. Yeah, but, but you see how they lie and twist things? Incredible, incredible. Harold C. Camping ah. was no more a preacher 
than Governor Christie is a quiet church mouse. Yeah, he's a church mouse. He looks like he looks like he ate every church mouse in the world. Rather, camping was a rogue elder who left the supervision of a legitimate denomination and who had who had zero formal seminary training. If he did, he would have acquired key qualifications for biblical interpretation. He thought uh, the mention of a fig leaf was the nation of Israel. I, I don't know how true that is, but... Among them, the knowledge of Scripture's original languages of Hebrew and Greek. And may I add a little Aramaic? Yeah, I was just going to say that. A more appropriate title for him would be cult leader. Absolutely. Like like uh, Marshall Applewhite of Heaven's Gate. Or uh, Jones. Jim Jones. Jim Jones. Or any one of today's counterfeit phony Christian sects. Like the Evangelicals, the Born Againers, it's, uh, the, paid, the Snake uh, Handlers, the, the Pentecostals, the, all of them. The Evangelicals. Phonies. Taking up serpents. Phonies. They're dancing around with poisonous rattlesnakes in, in the church. What about Pat Robertson? Would you Pat Robertson. Phonies, phonies, counterfeit. Mark 7, verse 7 through 9, covers them all. Covers them all. Uh, what about Joel Olstein? Covers them all. Benny Hinn. Covers them all. Yeah, the, not Benny Hill. Benny. Uh, yeah, Joel not Osteen. Benny, at least Benny Hill's funny, for God's sake. At least, uh, yeah, Joel Osteen, the prosperity preacher. God wants you to be rich and get richer. Doesn't God mention wants anything. you to be content with contentment. Yes, if you have the the uh, essential basics for living a uh, healthy life, um, you should be content with that. that. Then you, you know... Sadly, you have wealth. camping enters eternity not only with his irresponsible eschatological predictions, but also with blood on his hands. As reported at the time in World Net Daily, a group of persecuted Christians in Vietnam heard a translation of camping's prediction that they would be raptured on May 21, 2011. Oh, brother. In response, 7,000 of these unsophisticated but sincere Christians gathered on a mountaintop, rejoicing that their sufferings would soon be over. But instead, many were slaughtered by the military police. Unarmed people? In response to this tragedy, Camping and Family Radio revised his mad prophecy with a new date for Judgment Day. Even though we have it on the highest authority that of that day and hour no, no man! No. Not even the angels in heaven. No one knows! The day of his coming. Yeah, but apparently people like Carol Camping, when he was alive, he knew. And he was wrong every time. <laughs> well, there you go. And and when people scolded him, he says, Stop, Don't well, pick on me. I'm just a humble servant of God. Uh, I'm an old man. Don't pick on me. Now, Then he gave another pred prediction, and he was wrong again. Let me just say this. Uh... I'm not going to laud people graduating from seminary school and knowing something, but the man should have at least, you know, had some sort of biblical training, for God's sakes. The only other way you're going to know anything about the Bible is if you are a prophet. And God has to put it in your head. What's there? But otherwise, how the hell is camping or anybody else like him going to know anything about the Bible? 
I mean, that's just ridiculous that you don't even know that the Bible is written in those two languages. Original languages. Well, you know, um, that's bad. Pope Francis's uh, statement, recent statement where he made a mistake, he made an error. Error. Uh, error is very similar to the late Harold Camping making a big error, big errors, errors. Um, in, the, in fact, that they both, just like Joel Olstein and Pat Robertson and all of them, uh, who, who I consider to be right-wing fundamentalists from different organizations, but right-wing uh, nonetheless. And even if, they're, even if they're not that, even if they're not what that, they are trying to do. It's misinterpretation of what is actually in the Bible. Because they are trying to make the Bible agree with their way of life. Which is arrogance. Okay. Which is self selfishness, vanity. Like the right-wingers who are rewriting the Bible to make it more conservative-friendly. Not realizing that they are breaking one of the the major... Oh, but Mr. Phil sins. Robertson will stand up there and he will tell you how you gays are breaking the law of God. And you have something... But they don't realize that they're breaking the law of God, too. Right, sure. By making these changes. Yeah. Now, you have something to read uh, later on, on, Phil, not, on Phil, Phil Robertson. Robertson yes. So, let's make that... Uh, well, maybe uh, after I wet my whistle. Actually, speaking of high tea, high green tea, for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, your high green tea was not covered. No, it's not going to, otherwise it will be too hot. All right. Would you like it now? No, because i got to squeeze the bag. Which means, you're, we're I gotta gonna, squeeze which the tea means bag we're going to have to break... Because you have to squeeze your yeah, I gotta go squeeze the tea squeeze bagger. your tea bag, your tea bagger, your bag. You gotta squeeze your <laughs> the bag. Bag of tea, yes, yes. Levity bells, interesting. Children whose mothers ate more peanuts and tree nuts while pregnant are less likely to de develop allergies to those foods according to a study that reverses previous doctor recommendations. The study from Boston Children's Hospital found that the children of women not allergic to peanuts and tree nuts who ate five or more servings a week of the foods had a lower risk of allergies than <coughs> kids whose mothers ate less than one serving a month study was published Monday in the journal JAMA Pediatrics. JAMA? Journal of the American Medical Association. Pediatrics. Pediatrics. Not, okay. It wasn't a play on words like they, were, they weren't trying to say jammies or jammy. Yeah. Okay. Nothing to say on that. I will co proceed. Uh, Ah, really? Why, you want to say something else on that? No. I eat nuts every day. I think nuts... Are nuts. I think nuts No, are I nuts. think nuts... Uh, nuts was voted uh, one of the top ten healthiest foods you can eat. Uh, yeah, nuts and seeds, yes. Yeah, uh, I was reading. Number three. I was reading something that I... Uh, some banner that I put on uh, the Facebook group. One of my five Facebook groups, Holistic Health Talk. Hello, group. Hello. Hello, let me, hello, ball, like Ed Norton. Let me salute my five Facebook groups. Holistic Health Talk, which happens to be on the air now. Um, yes, they're, they're one, of the, the, one of the ten top healthiest foods would be nuts and seeds. And that's about all I have to say. But what I want to also say is that uh, some very exciting laws were passed. Mm. I believe uh, Hawaii gave the green light to, uh, marijuana. to have marijuana and hemp. You know, and you know, I got God bless that Jerry Brown. I think I think he started the steamroller by legalizing in industrial hemp. But it's it's becoming legalized little by little. The world is becoming legalized. I mean, hemp and marijuana, which is great because marijuana is medicine. So uh, I would say that Jerry Brown is like creating jobs, huh? 
It's part of the to me. So, it's part uh, of the green movement. And uh, he raised taxes. So uh, where's this uh, theory about the lower taxes creates jobs? No, of course you got to raise taxes on the rich, not the little guy. Oh no, no, no! That uh, that will stop uh, investment and creating jobs. Yeah, in China. Well, in they Bangladesh, don't, they don't say where they create. In Bangladesh, no, they don't say that. They conveniently leave that out. But uh, also, uh, I think that Russia put a ten-year ban on, on on GMOs, and more countries are saying no, no to GMO. About to, time. to Monsanto. Say no to GMOs to Monsanto. That's right, and it's, it's so these two exciting things are taking place. You know, uh, the legalization of marijuana and hemp, uh, saying no to the evil uh, demonic Monsanto and GMOs, and uh, Canada is working towards legalizing uh, prostitution. It is currently in the works. And I think it's great. I think it's great. And uh, maybe it's that uh, that uh, crystal blue, crystal clear blue cosmic light that's uh, currently uh, shining on the planet Earth that I heard so much about. You know, de December fourth, December third, or December fourth. It was going to be a new awareness of everyone, intuitive awareness. Maybe Concerning what? Like things, uh, positive things are supposed to happen, but but then again, we're living. Well, I don't think it hit Paul Ryan. No, no, no. The the, the no the light the light did not affect Republicans because oh, okay. they're already under Satan's control. Ah. So it's not going to affect Republicans. Satan has no way back, so they don't either. No, they don't want to. They don't want to comply and do the right thing. So you know. No repent. No, there's no repentance. Just oh. look at them. Look at their faces. They have such douchebag-looking faces, uh, uh, such negative faces. You know, Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, uh, John Boehner. I mean, you line them all up. Well, where do they get these women to love, to love them? You know? The obnoxious ogre, Chris Christie. Uh, the Asenheim uh, antics of Rush Limbaugh. I mean, all of them. Uh, the the uh, the witches of Fox News. Hmm. Yeah. Sarah Palin uh, was seen with uh, what's the gentleman's name again? Philip Robertson. The no, doctors. she and when she actually defended him. Yeah. She never even read the piece. Well, she is a she is an an idiot. Talk about ideology. She is a yeah. <laughs> she, she is a bubblehead. Exactly. She never read it, but she's defending him. Yeah. Because he is uh, part of the right wing. Yeah, like a Christian. So right. To speak. So he's automatic. Quote unquote. So based on ideology, he's automatically good right. Guy. He's the good guy. Right. He's one of the good guys. Yeah. Which means people like her can never be convinced can never be made to vote um, progressive. Baby Democrats are baby killers, secular humanists, atheists, etc., etc., etc. Because maybe okay. Sarah Palin and perhaps uh, uh, Michelle Bachman and the others, maybe these uh, right-wing women are uh, in favor of bigotry and racism and... Uh, uh, and, well, what he done? And a uh, 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 corporate corruption. Jeez. Corporate corruption and uh, when it's all dug slave down. Slave labor. When it's all dug down to its into the ground, several feet. You see that these people worship elitists. The government and the country should be governed by the elitists. And the elitist not by the crowd and the, the herd. No, the the elitists uh, represent money. Alexander Hamilton and, goes uh, back to that. Yeah, they represent money, and money is their golden calf, their idol. That's the one they pray to. Certainly not the guy that got in the Bible. Like I said today, when uh, G. W. Bush used to say he was talking to God. 
Sure was it the God of the Bible he was talking to. No, he was talking to the devil. And you can see that by the fruits of his labor. Iraq, Afghanistan, Medicare Part D, on, and Homeland Security, on and on and on. Why did Homeland Security buy up all that ammunition? You're expecting something. It certainly sounds like it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Bethlehem, the West Bank. Okay. In a Christmas message, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has referred to Jesus as a Palestinian messenger of hope. I thought he was a Jew. That's what I thought. Palestinian officials said Abbas used the term in a historic context, applying to all those in the Holy Land at the time, regardless of religion. Well... Well, Jewishness is not a religion. It's a race. Jesus is the... the things that came out of his mouth were very contrary to... Uh, um, the mistreatment of Palestinian people by, by uh, the, the modern day Israel. Well, what he's saying, I believe, is that back then they were all in Palestine. That is true. You know. That is true. And I believe Palestine has a relationship to the Philistines, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds very similar. Just like the, uh, the Assyr Assyrians sounds a lot, a lot like the country Syria. Ass well, the Assyrians, Assyrians uh, became Germans. The modern day descendants. Okay. Few scholars dispute that Jesus was raised as a Jew. Abbas emailed comments Monday appeared to be part of an effort to reach global public opinion and strengthen links between the Palestinian and Christian narratives. Bethlehem, the traditional birthplace of Jesus, is a Palestinian town in the West Bank. Okay? Yeah, well, there's, there's certain there's certainly not a whole lot of sharing going on in that area, so I would say uh, that uh, it, w it goes contrary to anything that Jesus mentioned. So well, what there will always be a, a violence there because, in fact, there will come a time when the Holy Land will be overrun by the Gentiles. The King of the North, the Holy Roman Empire, Seventh Resurrection. Wasn't that, didn't that happen during the Crusades? This is the last resurrection. Oh, the last it resurrection. has not happened yet. It will happen soon. Uh, the, the intervention of the King of the North uh, is supposed to happen after the uh, the king of the south, the Muslim extremists, pushes at him. Uh, pushes at him. Attack Israel. No. The Holy Roman Empire will attack Israel because the Muslim extremists would be dead, have, finished. What? But they would, They would have been present in modern day Israel. They will push the the modern day the, the modern day Islamist radicals will be a consortium of countries with probably Iran at the head. Even though Iran is making nice nice with the United States right now, with Obama. Iran is making nice nice for a reason. <coughs> trade? They are not doing trade right now. They still have the sanctions on. Really? Yeah. They are not selling as much oil as they can because the United Nations has the sanctions on them, yet, and for six more months.
to prove that they will not seek the bomb. Yes. Okay. Atomic uh, uh, energy. But I can assure you that the next war with the Holy Roman Empire, etc., will be involving those bombs. Well, they, they don't want Iran to have the bomb because uh, the United States has this uh, obsession with always protecting and defending Israel. Well, it's not an obsession. We're brothers. Yeah, but... We are brothers. But the modern-day Israel is not the nice... is not so nice to uh, its inhabitants. If, you, if you're not Jewish, uh, I mean, how are the Christians treated in Jerusalem? They're over there. They live there. Nobody bothers them? Muslims and Christians, they're, they're in uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, because yeah, the largest, uh, one of the largest, or but the... But Jerusalem's going to be taken over by the Muslims yeah. pretty soon. The mosque for a while in uh, Jerusalem, where is, that is in the location where the original Solomon's Temple was built, uh, that's a very primary... The Dome of the Rock? Is that's that a very, there? that's a primary holy spot for Muslims. That's why, one of the big ones. Hey. Religion is the biggest cause of problems in the world, and has always been. Organi and back then, the religions involved Zeus, organized and Mercury, organized religions, and Saturn. Now those gods don't exist anymore. Mercury, yeah. How come? People wasted their lives, their fortunes, their whatever. Well, the Hindu, on these gods, the Hindu gods time. are still around. Yeah, 30 million of them. Hindu gods, goddesses, and demigods. 30 million of them. And they have like a whole family uh, lineage. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. Anyone here ever see one? Me? Not yeah, did anybody ever see one? I've never even seen a leprechaun. Because they don't exist! How do you know leprechauns don't exist? You ever seen a unicorn? You see, you see those photos of... Uh, um, from the Victorian era of uh, child, the child, these two girls in England that were that were playing and talking to fairies out in the woods. Uh. You know, somebody actually thought this was a hammer. This is actually a blackthorn shillelagh. Hammer down! This is a blackthorn shillelagh imported from Ireland, weapons grade, with the shamrock of authenticity. For you jabronis that are wondering what this is. All right. Uh, you want to take a little break? Yes! We're going to take a little break. A little break, and when... Wish I, I had a lemon. And, you don't have any? No. Get the large bottle of uh, lemon juice concentrate from the Dollar Tree. I don't have it now. I know. When I need it now to wet my whistle, there's wet nothing, my beak. There's nothing... <laughs> your beak. There's nothing more... Uh, oh, you Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> There's nothing more refreshing than uh, cold water, especially icy cold water with lemon juice or lime. It really hits the spot, and it's a great detoxifier too. I will. We you will take. You mean to poop right after? Uh, overall. Right. Over, overall, I'm not talking about colon cleansing. Overall, uh, we're going to take a little break, and uh, I will be back. Me. James P. Madonna will be back with our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, from his uh, Dogfight Studios. And I think he is waiting for me right now. So we'll be back. Oh. All right. Okay. We are back on... Um, uh, this is James P. Madonna, and welcome to Progressive Discussions, and I am here uh, with our voiceover uh, artist, and, uh, William H. Moore the III, and we, we're at uh, Dogfight Studios right now, and uh, how are you feeling this week, William? How are you doing? Same. No better, no worse. That's good. That's be, a, it could be a lot better, let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, the, the holidays are, yeah. in fact, uh, not yet, you know, we still have uh, New Year's 2014 coming up, but... Uh, Thank God the Christmas season is at a close. And uh, well, by the way, now now is the best time 
for people to buy things. The, uh, the after Christmas sales must be happening right now. Not to mention returns for all the ingrates that don't appreciate their gift. But, um, you know, it, it's just so annoying, you know, uh, the bombardment with everything. You know, the, 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 the annoying, sickening songs and commercials uh, and everything. I also don't like people getting into fights in stores. I think that is ridiculous. Oh, you mean like people getting tra trampled for a sale item? Or arguing over, that's the last one that was mine, no, it's mine, and they get mad. I mean, uh, it's not worth it. It's, a, yeah, it's, so a, it's an item. I mean, what happened to a man's goodwill towards man? Somebody somebody placed a, um, a joke on the internet where it says, you know, well, one day everyone's giving thanks and saying a prayer, or, and then the next day they're trampling people yep. that for, for, well, uh, for an item. <laughs> well, they, they do that before when they're shopping. That's true. That's true. Well, what's happening now is most people are shopping online for convenience, and and uh, you know a lot of companies are offering free shipment, and of course the prices are um, very low. Um, uh, they beat out the retail stores, which is going to. It would be nice to be wealthy. Wealthy, where you don't give a rat's ass, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the retail you stores, know, the retail stores will become a thing of the past. Uh, I hope not, because it's you can't take everything away. It's like putting your meal into a capsule. It's not just getting your gut filled. It's the joy of the pleasure and the taste of eating. Just like shopping, it's fun to get out and enjoy the experience sometime. Yeah, you can watch movies at home nowadays all you want to, but it's nice to get out. Don't take all the, huma the human humanity out of it, being human. Yeah. You still have to get out and do things. Yeah, you always could buy booze to take home, but people like to go out to bars and clubs too and restaurants. Well, you can't meet anybody at home. That's right. So not everything is quicker. Well, I take that back. There's online dating. <laughs> yeah, and how much of that really? They, but, they said 80 yeah. plus percent fails. just doesn't work. So Well, it's not good. What percentage of marriages fail too? That's almost near three quarters. Yeah, because because people don't stick it out like they did in the old days. People are basically and marriage selfish. Is going, percentage wise of those getting married, new marriages are going way, way down annually now. Yeah, no, they don't, people don't honor their marriage vows like the old days, but, no. uh, well, in the old days, they also stood together for the kids, which was a mistake. That was bad, too. Yep. But um, the, um, the products today, I believe, I'm strongly convinced, have a deliberate built-in obsolescence. Like, uh, take, like my mom, she's gone through... In a few years, she's gone through three Bissell vacuum cleaners. They all burn out less than a year, sometimes less than six months. She's gone through several boombox stereos, brand new, all different companies, not just American companies, but you know, even Sony's, and they burnt out. They just the, the CD player stops working. Uh, she can't, you know, you you get nothing but static with the stations. Nothing tunes in. They burnt out. Light bulbs, even compact fluorescent light bulbs, especially from the dollar store, they don't last several years like they used to. Um, it, it just seems like there's like a built-in obsolescence where they just deliberately break. Fans, box fans. We, I had, I the saw only, the only thing that lasts forever, Twinkies. <laughs> They still have the same God knows how long shelf life on them, basically. So, yeah, I mean, you know? um, it's uh, it's it, it's really it's it's not only greed, but it's it's contempt for for the customer. I mean, uh, I, I have a box van from more than several years ago, and it's still going strong. But all the new ones that my sister had gotten, they all burnt out. Yeah. And uh, it's just like they're designed to burn out. Uh, where does the greed end? You know, that's, that's the funny part. Where and what do they expect to get out of this? If, if you buy one, say from brand A, that doesn't last that long, are you going to go back and buy another brand A? So you screw this, I'll try brand B this time. I'm glad you brought that. I wonder that. how many people are pushing away from return customers. Uh, whereas yours lasted, most, you'd, you'd highly recommend it to other people. So how, how are they hoping to increase their sales potential? I don't understand. Yeah, that's a very good point. Many times I think we've all had things say, I'll never buy another one of those again. It was horrible. I went to a different company. 
Yeah, same, right? Well, the same thing happened with us. We we don't buy Bissell. We, we have a Eureka vacuum cleaner now, and it works great so far, knock on wood, you know. But uh, yeah, you're right. When they purchase Brand A, and Brand A has a reputation for, for blowing out as, you know, this is what normally, unfortunately, happens with electric appliances. That you're not going to return and buy brand A again. You won't have return customers. Uh, this is why I am very reluctant to buy an electronic device in fear that it might burn out. But look what made, and the quality is excellent now. Look how fast the Korean automakers, Kia, and uh, oh God, the other one, uh, Hyundai, and Cotton. Look, they started by giving you a 100,000 mile warranty and 10 years. You can't beat that with a breakdown. No big deal to fix it at their expense. You can't beat that. That's smart move. Oh, that's smart. That's what made them get off the map when they first came to this country. Nobody heard of them. So they gave you basically a warranty you can't refuse. And their quality is incredibly wonderful. Well, the, you know, that was a very smart move on their part because... Yeah. It, well, it shows that we have faith in our product, too. Uh, we can offer to give you this kind of yeah. warranty because we know it's made well. But they, but also, they have a huge... When they started, they have a huge strike against them by being unknown. Because people are not going to want to... That's too long, did it? No, people are not going to want to take a chance well, on unknown products. when they first came products. to this country, you had your electronics makers. You had Samsung and LG, the two South Korean companies. Uh, boy, look how quickly they climbed at the same rate, basically, but not faster than the other two, again, Korean auto manufacturers. So what's this thing with South Korea and the quality? It's great. It's came on, came virtually out of nowhere. Now, I don't think you know this. Everybody would normally guess Intel is the world's largest chip manufacturer. <laughs> Samsung. Really? Yeah. Number one chip manufacturer in the world. Well, Samsung puts out a, a, a great, great product. computer product. They you put know, out great everything. Tablets. Uh, yeah. Their appliances, their, their refrigerators, washing machines. Their, their, their flash screen, their flash screen are TVs. Are tremendous. And by the same token, so are LGs. I saw... And don't forget the Japanese. They're yeah. still excellent quality. As well, well, when I was at Best Buy's near nearby Paramus one time, they had all the flat screen um, uh, TVs lined up. All the companies, even Sony and Samsung, had the most sharpest, clearest picture yeah. with the yeah. richest colors. It was the Samsung. And they, the two Koreans, just announced this past week they're both coming out with a 105 inch 4 HD TV. Super HD, HD. 100, 105 inches. Yeah. You know. Well, Ralph Cramden's 3D television is already out. <laughs> well, so they've had Diapisa for decades. He wasn't really off the track, was he? No, he wasn't. He was kidding. It was a comedy back then, but boy, it came about pretty quickly. Uh, you know, you know, science fiction often becomes science reality. Science fact. Science fact, yes. Science sure fact. Sure does. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at the technology, how rapidly it's growing. Changing. Changing. To the point where, you, in, a, in a matter of no time at all, you won't have doctors really anymore. You are just technicians monitoring the little chips placed inside of you and things like that. You can't see your laugh about it. You'll come home and your mom will say, but the doctor say, I had some cancer, he gave me, he gave me an injection for it, I'm fine. One of the best shows you could watch now is, I think it's called Futurescape with James Woods, the host and narrator. Mm -hmm. It is incredible, some of the stuff they're showing that it is coming out very quickly. My cousin, her husband, he's the head of the, uh, the Surgeon General, uh, sorry, uh, the head of the ER in their town of uh, in uh, Winchester, Virginia. He told me about 10 years ago, he goes, we're getting the point building in a matter of years. You won't need doctors anymore. Boy, was he right on target. He said, you'll have technicians. You won't need doctors because we don't have to go inside of you anymore. With these nano nanotechnology and robots inside, yeah. they'll inject them into you and they go in and attack cancer. So it's like a little army going to battle. So They have, they have, a, they have a, a literally a, a pre-programmed... Uh, like, like an artificial immune system. Well, it does everything. It warns everything. But the bottom line is what we really have to get to is become like bugs. It will be nice when you lose a limb. It's no big deal. It'll grow you another one with your own DNA. So it's the same thing. Yeah, like an, like a, an invertebrate. Or your Just teeth. Generate. Uh, anything.
Well, they're already growing organs in a lab. Well, yeah, but they better start using them. But only the rich can afford it. Yeah, see, that's not right. Yeah. You know? So, and then again, what's this do and put out of jobs all the medical schools? It will all be electronics engineering will be the big thing, I think, in the future. More bigger than it is already. Yeah. So it's changing. It's less invasive, better for the human being, but we're going to have to, we will have to address the point uh, of pregnancy because we'll be getting overcrowded because people will live longer. They say to the point of an age of an average of 150. So, you know, think about that. Meaning your retirement age will change. You won't retire to your 90, 100 maybe. There's no need yeah. to. Well, the human, the human you're body. Athletic, you'll be playing football to get 90 or 100. <clears throat> Things was, like this. <clears throat> there was a book by a famous gerontologist, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Walford. I think his name was Dr. Ray Walford, a famous gerontologist. Uh, <clears throat> he said the human body, under ideal conditions, uh, can live to 150 very easily under ideal conditions. Well, it should. And what they, what we were going to work on at SuperTech, uh, they just said the other day on FutureScape, and we were taught in college, theoretically. Your cells should never stop duplicating and reproducing. You should continue to live on to two or three hundred years old. They don't know why at some point they stop, which is the aging process. In theory, it should never stop. You yeah. see, I was told by a friend of mine, he was a producer out of Hollywood, an older gentleman. He's Sadly, I'm sure he's passed now. This is over 15 years ago, and he was 80-something. His son was a scientist at one of those great think tanks at Stanford University. His son told him, this is the gentleman relaying the story to me. He said, Dad, we have the serum to make people live two to three hundred years old. It's not that hard. But we got a visit from these guys in nice suits, flashed their badges, and said, you are to put that in a safe, lock it, and you are to tell no one. The men prepared to leave. The last guy out stopped, turned around, and this, his son said, the guy looked right at me and says, it's amazing how quick, quickly entire families can disappear. I mean, that was a threat. You tell anybody, you're as good as dead, and so is your whole family. But he said, it's not no big deal, the serum. We've had it for a long time. We're told to keep that under lock and key, and, but, he, but he did tell his son, and his, his father, I mean, and his father told me about that. Sounds like the Roswell findings. Oh, you know that it happened. Come on, that's just BS. And there was no Area 51, nothing going on at all. That's why they have armed guards and signs up. They'll shoot to kill if you're in the air. And if you go near there, helicopters will come out, uh, land rovers or whatever, jeeps, everything come looking for you. But nothing's going on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's not there anymore. Supposedly they moved Area 51. They think Utah is what the speculation is now. But that would surprise me to make a lip that's a little top now, but still underground. You don't know what's going on at Area 51. You don't know what's on under there or in there. They may look that's a little now, and maybe they did move a lot of it or a new one. But it wouldn't surprise me if there's something down underground. Massive tunnels or R&D laboratories, who knows what all, hangars, anything. I would almost bet on it. That something is still going on there. Oh, yeah, I mean, they've, they've taken all the abandoned uh, missile silos from the Cold War, and there's like, it's almost like an underground uh, hotel. All modern, you know, even hydroponic garden with uh, uh, LED uh, na natural lighting. You know, it's a self-sustaining... Um, uh, Whatever you well, want. you just don't know what's going on. And hey, let's let's be honest. Hold seventy-five people, of the richest people, in and case of an emergency. And let's give our government a break. They can't detail everything they're doing for national security purposes. You can't blame them. Every country does this. So you're a fool if you do detail everything you're yeah, doing. Yeah. Why not just print it all out? And give it to your enemies. Then? Yeah, but my so. what I don't like is that they um, keep secret and they deliberately. Um, um, suppress inventions and science that would help to benefit yeah. the quality of life. Yeah, certain things are, and the pharmaceutical For companies, people. and it comes down to your lobbyists, you know, who you blame here and whatever, and things, and what's their reasoning behind it. There will always be arguments for pro and con, but you're right, when people are suffering, this stuff should really be out there for them, and uh, we don't put a price on the, or value on the person's life saying, he's a poor person, who cares, or, or when the, it's a, you hear of a wealthy abduction of a wealthy white child, 
about, gets all over the press, a poor little black girl from the ghetto, never makes the news or the paper even. And that's just not right. A life is a life is a life. Uh, no matter what color you are, what how, what your, your family's worth is, a life is, is priceless. No life is worthless. You know, so that's wrong in essence. So yeah, that's right. what I think. You're right. Okay. Um, that's basically it. We're uh, we're gonna now uh, return to uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. He Our regularly scheduled program. We'll be right back. Yeah, he should be he should be done with his lunch. So uh, we'll be back, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, later on. William H. Moore the third, coming from the Dogfight Studios. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read Censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read Censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Yeah, Dr. Bill, I, I like the, uh, I like a nice rare thick roast beef sandwich with horseradish Sauce, uh, uh, you know, like the uh, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it? No, the whipped Gold's Red Horseradish, mm. the one that's really finely pureed, with a freshly ground black pepper, sliced tomatoes, not mustard. Um, no, I like spicy mustard. Uh, nah, no oh, romaine. Horseradish. No romaine lettuce. Just. Um, uh, Sliced tomatoes should be good. Vine ripened uh, on a Portuguese roll or semolina Italian bread. Ciabatta. Or, or rye. Or fresh baked European rye. Oh, I'm sorry. Russian brown. As long as it doesn't fall apart. For a sandwich, I need a spongy bread. I don't want bread that's going to fall apart and I'm going to have nothing but the insides. Brioche. The, yeah, and my fingers here. Right. I want to thank uh, William H. Morrill III, our uh, voiceover artist at Dogfight Studios. Thank you, uh, Billy, Bi thank you, Billy Morrill, for the uh, visit I had with you. 
it was very invigorating as always and I'll see you next time I will talk to you later of course uh, and uh, <laughs> right now uh, Dr. Bill is having his high green tea but we will continue um, with our readings and I believe uh, the reading will be on the Duck Dynasty gentlemen Phil Robertson yeah. is officially back on the Duck Dynasty oh he is yes yeah. oh his his suspension the is over. well maybe it'll say in here so I, I remind me if it doesn't say in here why I will tell you at the end mm -hmm. A week after A&E suspended its reality star for controversial comments about homosexuality and race relations, the network has changed its mind. After discussions with the Robertson family, as well as consulting with numerous advocacy groups, A&E has decided to resume filming Duck Dynasty later this spring with the entire Robertson family. Oh, they have that many shows already? They got nine in the can. You mean nine that has not been televised yet? Correct. That's, uh, that will take you through January, February, and one week in March. Okay. So, I don't know when they begin the schedule again, but obviously they need some new shows by March. Hey, uh, uh, Phil Robertson, that's his name, Phil, Phil Robertson. Robertson. Phil Robertson is, is only one member of that clan, that family. So, you know, the opinions of Phil Robertson are just the opinions of Phil Robertson. They ch should not reflect the whole entire family, yeah. which is what the reality show is based on. Uh, then there's the subject of censorship, which I am against. Continue. But there is also the subject of accuracy. Uh, which you will get into. Yeah. Uh... Robertson, 67, a self-proclaimed Bible thumper, made headlines last week when an interview with GQ magazine went viral. GQ magazine? Gentlemen's Quarterly. Interviewed the straggly, correct, hillbilly bearded uh, Phil Robertson. Redneck. Redneck was on. Did they put his photo on GQ magazine? I guess so. I didn't was see he, the article. Was, was, did he, was he a sharp dressed man like the uh, ZZ Top uh, song? He wears camouflage. And he was on GQ. Around the house. He, I've ne he's never been. The only time we saw him dressed up. That's funny. The only time we saw him dressed up was his his wedding. When they redid his wedding. Was he wearing like a pickle barrel with suspenders? And, and, a, and, and a usually he wears camouflage and blackface. No, for going in the woods. Yes. Oh, that's right. I and dark were... glasses, sunglasses. Yeah. Because the Louisiana sun is kind of bright, baby. Okay. Oh, it's strong sun. Mm -hmm. In it, he talked about homosexuality as a sin, as well as race relations in the pre-civil rights era South. Asked what he considered sinful, Robertson said, start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there bestiality, sleeping around with this woman and that woman and that woman and those men. Amid outcry from the NAACP, the gay rights ad advocacy groups, the network distanced itself from Robertson's, putting him on an indefinite filming hiatus, saying that his views in no way reflect those of A&E networks. In his statement, in its statement Friday, the network emphasized again that Robertson's views aren't in line with A&E's core values, which are centered around creativity inclusion and respect but uh, the network said duck dynasty is not a show about one man's views it resonates with a large audience because it is a show about family a family that america has come to love right and then, you know don't 
don't bite the hand that feeds you. Uh, obviously, if it wasn't for the sponsors, these uh, this show would not be on the air. They, they, these people will not would not be getting paid so much money for doing the reality show, and uh, the sponsors do not want to, uh, I suppose, uh, alienate, or ostracize, rock of the boat. They don't want to uh, uh, make a large segments of their uh, consumer base vanish. Okay. Disappear. After A and E announced Robertson's suspension, petitions signed by hundreds of thousands of viewers surfaced, demanding the network bring him back. Political figures, including Sarah Palin. Well, yeah, of course the Republicans. Senator Ted Cruz. Of course, the Republicans want him back. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. They they hate gays to begin with. Right? Jumped in to, to defend him, citing free speech. All the religious nuts, yeah. Now, what about free speech that comes out of the mouth of progressives and Democrats? The Democrats do not, they cannot utter anything that is considered free speech. Well, didn't they criticize the Pope, Pope Francis? We, in the, the right wing does not listen. They have tin ears where Democrats are concerned because Democrats I'm sorry you're not they can't get over it Democrats are baby killers they are secular humanists they are atheists so free speech they're big government lovers well who, who else is gonna take care of the poor <gasps> and the middle class the poor should take care of themselves sure pull yourself up buddy oh yeah maybe Maybe you'll you'll end up pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and and boiling your boots uh, and make soup to survive because that's the only thing you're gonna have left to eat. Maybe you don't have any boots. Maybe you don't have any boots. Maybe uh, if you learn to uh, if you teach a man to fish, maybe the river and the lakes are, are polluted and he can't fish. <laughs> you know or whatever. But uh, it seems like free speech is is great. Unless somebody says something critical of you, of them, and then it's not so good, it's free speech, you know. Well, you know, uh, just like um, truth is a defense for libel and uh, etc., accuracy is the truth for free speech. Free speech is not free. We cannot yell fire in a crowded theater. No, that would be very... We can't do that. That would be very irresponsible and very... Exactly. Exactly. So this is per, kind of pertaining... That's why the gun lovers, in their de total defense of the Second Amendment, you know, they... Oh, he can't be regulated in any way, shape, or form. I'm sorry? It can't? Yeah, but 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 the first help, amendment is but but food stamps and and helping the poor is a big problem to them. But 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 having guns in the wrong hands is not a big problem to them. No, because and health care, the poor having health care is a problem. Again, at the bottom, when you dig down a few inches into the ground, yeah, of the right wing, right, what you find is they want their guns to take over the government. See, they got all of their people in place in the government, and yet they still won't trust the government. What the hell? I trust the government a hell of a lot more than I would trust a corporate CEO. That's for sure. I've said that many, many times before. Sake. Exactly, because when a corporation does business, it is thinking of only one thing, not humanity, but the bottom line. Right. Well, like I the told hell with humanity. Like, like Billy Morrow says, he called me the other day. He says, James, guess what's on right now? It, it's great. It's a documentary about the the men of the past who built America. And then I says, which men? And then he's naming them, and he says Rockefeller. I says, stop. I says, yeah, they sure built America. At what cost? 
And what, Jay what Gould, sacrifice? Frisk, Frick. Uh, 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 Carnegie? Carnegie. J.P. Morgan. Uh, J.P. Morgan, yeah. They Where? built America. On, no. On, on, they were the robber barons of the industrial age. Child labor, no labor laws. Exactly. No Good nothing. America. No no holidays with pay. That's what gave us no overtime, no the capitalism uh, we understand today. No benefits. That's yeah. where it began. From England. Don't people read um the Christmas story, uh, Oliver Twist, uh, Tale of Two Cities, uh -huh. all of this stuff, don't they get it? Damn, how it was once? <sighs> Something's in my eye. Ah. Yeah. I mean, how it was once? Right. I mean, the poor were poor. You know? And whose fault was it then? Were they not workers then? Did they not want to wish to uh, pull themselves up by the bootstraps? Were they all lazy bums? Oh, God. Continuing in this vein that we've been in here, the records, that's our local newspaper, Christmas Day newspaper ignored a celebration that represents a high holy day for many of its readers. Here we go again. Putting these all of these people writing, they, they want to put Christ back in Christmas. He was never there. No. No, never there. No. The history of December 25th is totally from paganism. Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. And to Christians this day is important. For the record to not have at least a related article or Merry Christmas on the front page seems to be anti-Christian. Well, this uh, evangelical born-again person on Facebook says to me, uh, Hey, uh, 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 even though he wasn't born on, on December 25th, we have to honor his birthday. I said, did, did Jesus say to honor his birthday? Bingo. Bingo. No, he didn't. That's why it's hidden. Of course, I got, only, no, I got was, no reply. It says in the Bible, only Herod and Pharaoh are interested in the day they were born because it is self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. well, okay. They wanted people to honor them, worship, That's correct. worship them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. And Jesus did not. Oh, uh, you. I think you forgot to mention where Phil Robertson was wrong in his statements. So if you want to do Which that. Which one? Yeah, we're coming to fill again here anyway. Yeah, okay, all right, complete the article. <clears throat> In the spirit of Christ, Catholics and Catholic charities do many good works and deeds to help the poor, the homeless, and those in need. So what does that have to do with religion? Well, I hope it isn't the charities that only give like uh, 10 cents to the poor. Uh, that too. But what does that have to do with the religion that has no bearing Nothing at on, all. No, no, no. Why not an article on the many people who are part of this effort to help others in need? Why not have nobody in need? Bingo! Shouldn't we be striving for that? Why must we have people in need? In this country! Why the wealthiest country! Well, it was once anyway. The wealthiest country in the whole wide world. Why must billions and billions of dollars be be in in corporate welfare be given for free to the to the elitists, uh, uh, where that money would eradicate homelessness and hunger and and uh, and poverty in America? Why must all the money? 
just be handed over to the rich. And not one word from the right wing about it. But God forbid, someone, someone buys a steak with food stamps and they're up in arms. What would they rather the poor buy, a Purina dog chow? Eat cat food like they used to. Spend, they, they want to tell, they want to tell the poor what to have for dinner. If exactly. they get food stamps, they yeah. don't get that much in food stamps anyway, in my opinion. Of course they don't. Do they, do they, do, 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 does uh, Mitch McConnell or Rand Paul or, or Paul Ryan or John Boner, Boehner and their family sit down and eat uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese and, and beans out of a can? <laughs> do they eat that? Does, do their children have to work for a minimum wage job? I don't oh, think so. They don't have to do that because they're smarter than us. No, because they say so. Yeah, of course they because do. Because they, they're better than us. Yes, they are. Because they say so. Look at them. Look how well they've done. They're working for the government. Oh, yes. They're living off the it, government it, it, dole. There's nothing like somebody... But don't you dare live off the dole. There's nothing like a kid being born with a silver spoon in his mouth for a daddy to train you and have you take over the family business. Uh, should I say Donald Trump? Oh, God. That guy is without... I don't understand... His haircut? <laughs> no. Uh, what? What is he? He's as a real estate... As far as I'm concerned, he has no substance. He has a real estate him. mogul. But he's always going bankrupt. Maybe, maybe he's not as good as his father was. Something, but the man, the man in himself has no substance to him. There's no substance. He, yeah, what, has he been married two times at least? He had the one, uh, and then Ivana? I, Ivana, the What do these women see in these the men? Mother, the mother of uh, Ivanka, a uh, lovely lady. She Ivana was, I believe she was a Hungarian, uh, no, I'm sorry, a Czechoslovakian uh, uh, model or be beauty queen, uh, something of that nature. And uh, well, why do you think they married Trump? I don't. I'll give know. you one guess. Why, why did uh, the late Anna Nicole Smith marry that? that yeah, but that, that was a deal they made. Shriveled up, raising a ninety some odd year old billionaire. But they actually made a contract. I oh, mean, a prenuptial. Whatever it was. Well, I don't blame him. Not a prenup because he was going to give her everything when he the quit. contract because she was nothing. She was a go-go dancer when he met her, Anna Nicole Smith. Hey, I wouldn't say go-go go, 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 go it's the, the, nothing. Well, they it's make, a little decent job, they, legitimate job. They make more money than a regular uh, nine-to-five full-time working stuff. There you go. That's for sure. There you go. But but anyway, the point but is... But that, 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 that uh, profession is looked down upon. Yeah, well... Because well, it, it supposedly has something to do with sex, you see. Anna Nicole Smith. Shriveled up billionaire, old geezer of a husband, who's probably dead now, now anyway. Yes, he's dead. He, when she married him, he had one foot on the banana peel and maybe the other foot halfway <laughs> in the gra grave. In the grave already, yes. I mean, come on. And, and she said, but I love him. Sure. She but just I don't know what these women see in these rich men. Okay? Okay. I'm just sorry. Well, they're very blasé and uh, I don't see it. boring. You, you, you see uh, um, <laughs> Mama Kardashian's husband, Chris Jenner, he, he looks like he's transforming into a woman. He's having all these plastic surgeries. Oh, good God. He looks like he looks like a, a, a tranny with a really bad plastic surgeon. Yeah. That's another one of reality shows that... Boring. Boring, like Joanne Worley from Laughing Boring. Oh, uh, speaking of that, they did a, actually a, a, a study or a, a report or something came out, and they did do the most uh, boring uh, reality shows. And your friend Honey Boo Boo was there, and Kardashians, and yeah, my uh, friend. It's, uh, <laughs> they were yes, a, a lot of people uh, think they're boring, but they're watching them. 
Well, what about Jersey Shore when it was on the air? They're all imbeciles, but people watch them. Watching. Uh, listening to the to the mindless uh, babble and antics of uh, uh, Jay Wow and uh, and uh, Snooky and Snooky. <laughs> Next year! Stupid, stupid people. Yeah. I urge the record not to ignore Christmas Day on the front page. But to do a story that illustrates the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning. Oh, yeah, tell us the Here true meaning. Here we go now. Uh, this, is the, this is the true meaning coming up. All right, I'm ready. Love, peace, and shopping, and selfless giving. Well, that's what the retailers want you to uh, how they want you to think uh, selfless giving well at least he didn't say it was the birthday of Jesus I'll give him that <laughs> selfless giving and, and spending money you don't have maxing out your your credit cards and then and then having target get hacked and all your information going to some crooks I heard Damn it, man. Forty million. I heard. Back to the ducks. Quack, quack. Back to the ducks. I am sure the fact that total disregard for Phil Robertson's First Amendment rights occurred in a right-to-work state was not missed by many readers. The writer leaves us to assume that the Bill of Rights is suspended or no longer applicable in right-to-work states. But this episode certainly represents America at its worst. The author is also thankful that Robertson is not a member of a labor union, as he probably would still be working. It does seem apparent that whenever Americans are protected by a union, their freedom of speech, as well as all basic freedoms, are better protected. A company's constitutional right to pursue profits and to hire and fire are well documented. But dismissal of an American for expressing his freedom of speech is something that cannot be allowed. Right, and I think the same thing took place with Charlie Sheen when he was on that show, Two and a Half Men. Charlie Sheen was most likely, and I, I didn't hear verbatim, word for word, everything he said, but I heard a lot of it, and, and I agree. I think Charlie Sheen was being accurate, and he was right in what he said. And it was his uh, freedom of expression, it was how he felt, and he got fired for it. I don't think that's right. I think people should not be allowed to get fired for just stating their opinion. It has to be just cause. Whether you agree with Robertson's opinion or not is unimportant. A United States citizen was penalized for expressing his freedom of speech and that can never be condoned I agree. or tolerated. I agree 100%. It's like what I said before. People love our freedoms. People love freedom of speech until somebody talks about you and criticizes you or puts you down. Now, as far as Phil Robertson, Duck Dynasty's remarks uh, and his Bible interpretation in regards to uh, gay people and whatever other statements Phil Robertson <laughs> made, what is your take on his Bible quotes? He's not accurate. As I said so many times, God is not judging anybody now except the elect. So it doesn't matter you telling, you know, you're gay, you're a bestialist, you're, you're a lesbian, you're, you're, you're a, a, a whoremonger, you're a this, that, yeah. and the other, you're, you're an, an adulterer. You're an abomination. You will not enter the kingdom of God. I got news for Phil Robertson. And all uh, punishment lovers. Hitler will be given a chance in a resurrection to become a god. 
Now, how do you it's like hard that? to believe. Of course it's hard to believe, but that's how it is. Even Charlie Manson? Charles Even Manson. Charles Manson. The Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey uh, Dahmer. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, hey, look. King David had his Bathsheba's husband killed. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He did a lot of bad things. But he repented of every one. And God called him a man after his own heart. So if that could happen with David. Correct. He certainly. It will happen with everyone. Everyone, with everyone will be given the chance. Even until the hunt. To live a life without the influence of the devil. Hundred years. Mm-hmm. That's the period where all this education is going to take place. Uh, well, there'll be two resurrections. There'll be the first resurrection, of course, is from spirit, uh, from human to spirit. That's the elect. That's the one called the rapture by born againers. The, the elect. The elect only. One hundred forty-four thousand twelve from each tribe. Oh boy, one of them says, well, 144,000 is not literally oh. mean 144,000. They're always interpreting things their way. Well, they're always saying that. That's what they say about the, uh, the, uh, the, the first day of the week as being the Sabbath. Well, it, it doesn't really matter which yeah. day it is as long as we honor Gord. Well, this guy, yeah, Gord, yeah, Archie yeah. Bunker, this guy says, uh, that, um, that you know he, he's so sure he's going to get raptured up and avoid the tribulation yeah. just because he repented and he but, uh he said he's covered by the blood of christ but it's either one or two corinthians 15 says otherwise a hundred are we going to believe him are we going to believe the harold campings of the world no. or the bible the bible you know you got to do one thing if you're searching for God, if there's a God, or whatever, searching for these answers, you got to come to a place where you say, wait a second. I'm going to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that this book is accurate, correct, because it's based on, literal. It's based on faith. Yeah. Is, is, well, faith is not literal. No. I'm going to make an assumption here. Make an assumption. I'm going to make an assumption that what it says, it says. So, then I'm going to check. Some guy's going to come to me, some Catholic church, whatever. I'm going to say the Sabbath is on Sunday. Go into this book here. I turn the page, I get in Leviticus, it says, Seventh day of the week is the Sabbath ordained by God as a sign between him and his people. Saturday. Well, now what am I supposed to do? Accept the traditions of the humans? Or what that Bible says? No, See, you, this is what you got to do. You don't go by the laws of man. You, you, exactly. don't, you don't go by the laws of organized religion. Exactly. Because they're man-made. Exactly. And that was the whole problems with gods and goddesses and everything. They were all created by humans. Well, I got news for Republicans. Unless somebody can prove that their god exists, no religion has any place interfering with politics. Oh, that's because true. you they have nobody is able to has been able to prove that their god exists. I don't care what the the born again. Uh, holy rollers say, "Oh, the miracle of of of, of conception and birth! Oh, the miracle of a, an acorn turning into a mighty oak tree." But that still doesn't prove anything. It could be the, the miracle of Mother Nature. It even, could be the miracle of science. Even if it proves something, let's again assume mm -hmm. that we're going to take literally from this book everything that it says. And it says the creation awaits the sons of God. 
What does that mean? Who are the sons of God? Well, we have to look further and we know who they are. They are the ones who will be born again into spirit. They will be gods themselves. So this creation, the universe, awaits them. So now we know why it was created. Because what the hell does a spirit, a god or whatever, need with physical crap? Nothing. Yeah, it has to serve a purpose. And the purpose has to be certainly not spiritual or spirit. The spirit has to have a reason for creating this physicality. Yeah, because there's nothing, there's nothing inherently positive when you think about it, when you weigh in out pros and cons of the physical world. No. I mean, there, there are a few of life's pleasures here and there, but there is predominantly pain and suffering and misery and unhappiness and disappointment. Well, that was because of the Garden of Eden. Now, that, that's, you know, it wasn't uh, created uh, like that. It's the same thing with... Uh, you know, you have, uh, you have close friends or a wife or a husband and, and they end up being phonies and, and, hey. and backstabbers. And I mean, life is full of disappointments. The thing of it is, none of this was created in vain. This when it was created, yeah. God said it was good. Very good. Okay. There was a time right. when the angels and Satan, but before he was became Satan, Lucifer, was in charge of the earth. Well, he and his angels didn't do their job. And there was destruction throughout the universe because of this. It wasn't created that way. None of it was created in vain. Just like uh, Psalm 104 verse 30, which goes with Genesis verse 2. Genesis verse 1, well, it's, and God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 no longer speaks about that creation. It is now speaking of another time when the earth was put into tohu and buhu, the Hebrew words chaos, void, chaos and void, and it had to be renewed. Psalm 104 verse 30, God had to come and renew the surface of the earth. The other planets and etc. that we remain in that destruction mode, they are not fixed. That is a job that the elect will have, or the gods that are produced after them. Because my understanding has it that all or many of the elect will remain in Jerusalem, in New Jerusalem, on the headquarters of the universe. Yeah, well, now, but the, uh, the universe will be made whole again. Yeah. Now the that's, Garden of Eden. That's what the book says. The Garden of Eden was a, a literally a physical place. A physical okay, garden. But without pain and suffering and an unhappiness and disease. There was none of that. And anything or discomfort or anything like that. There okay. was none of that until until Eve and then Adam took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to decide for themselves how they would live their lives. God was still teaching them. They were like kids yet. Their minds were not yet mature, as some angels are not. They, you know, angels are not, uh, when they're created, they're created by fiat. They're beings that are created. Well, they have to be taught. Yeah, not the car company, folks. I mean, the only thing that they get is immortality. Yeah. But they still have uh, uh, immature minds. I mean, you you got some uh, 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 demons that you see in the Bible that act like 
children. Uh, they're, they're stupid. Uh, 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 uh. They're not mature. Mischievous. Like poltergeist activity. I mean, Lucifer was mature. He played the pipes. Oh, he was an ar Hold on. He, Lucifer was an archangel. He was a great artist. Well, he was a pipe player. He was a light bringer. He was good. He was great. As the being that he was created, he was fantastic. Now, a brief word. Oh, by the way, was that reading finished? Or no. Not? All right, continue. I'm going to God. I got more duck here. All right. Before you say duck, um, what is your take on all these shows with these psychics that claim they can have a seance and talk to your dead relatives, telling you that oh, your your late father has a special message for you of comfort? Again, we go to the book and we see what the book says, and the book says they're taking the great dirt sleep. The dead know nothing. They so, are in their graves awaiting a resurrection. So when when there when the para the para um paranormal experts record voices on their uh, this their special whatever high frequency recording devices these are not voices coming from... If they are speaking to anyone. The dead relatives. Or hearing anyone. Yeah. They are demons. Playing games. Like they do on a Ouija board. That's correct. That's okay, correct. You heard the dead it. know nothing. All those shows you people like watching. That's correct. I mean, either you... You gotta come to a place. Ghost adventures. The ghost either hunters. Either you're going to believe that book, or you're going to believe made-up stuff. Uh, the Dead Files, that's another show. Three shows I just mentioned. And you how know? about that one out, out west where they got that that uh, that uh, ghost city, that's, ghost uh, town. Yeah, and, and uh, you mean the saloon in Tombstone that that's, was haunted? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the, uh, um, Zach, uh, Zach uh, Fagan or Fallon or Ray or something like that. He, uh, that's Ghost Adventures. Huh. That's Ghost Adventures. They go around the country and the world uh, investigating haunted uh, areas. And uh, There was a thing on Facebook last night. Didn't you see it? They, uh, uh, are these pictures true? There was one picture with uh, somebody driving a car, and then there was uh, like a face of a person in the back seat. So many things could be done in. Uh, yeah. Well, but what the hell is that? Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. That kind of crap. But what does it like, mean? Like, like, um, like the onion showing a picture of Michelle Obama walking her pet white rhino. What in the Washington. hell is that about? You know, if she really had a pet rhino and walked it like that, that it would be news all over the world, day and night. So someone photoshopped that. And she was controlling. The rhino, when she while she was walking it, it's hard enough to walk a damn bull mastiff, let alone a rhino. So I, I find it hard to believe. Why, how could she walk a rhino that weighs tons in Washington and not have it on the on the uh, mainstream media? Anyway, it didn't happen. Finish this reading, please. Louisiana's lieutenant. Governor says the Duck Dynasty reality TV show is important to the state tourism. Uh, it can be just like the Jersey Shore created tourism for Seaside Heights, New Jersey, and he could help connect the Robertson family with new producers if they cannot reach agreement with the A and E network. The networks is. Suspended patriarch Phil Robertson last week for telling GQ magazine that gays are sinners akin to adulterers and swindlers. Huh. Lieutenant Governor Jay Dardan said the show is produced around the Robertson family home base in Ochica, Ochica, 
Ua chica. Tira. Ua chica. Who the hell knows? <laughs> Parish brings in visitors and investors to the state. Okay. So, are you saying that uh, the uh, the small town that they are from? Duck Dynasty family is a sort of a suburb of New Orleans, or is it no? Far? What, what I see all the time on the show is a water tower that says Monroe. Monroe, maybe it's a county. Maybe it's maybe there's a Monroe County, Louisiana. So it must be. Yeah, Monroe, uh, they're like near the Bayou, but aren't the counties, or in the Bayou? Uh, down there, aren't counties called parishes? Maybe that's, that that's the slang word down here for county. Uh, it, it yeah describes an area of the you know, city. It's like in Japan, the uh, the uh, counties are called like preceptors, something like that. Is okay. that everybody's got a different word for their region, you know. Uh, in, you, uh, in 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 England, they're shires. Well, I mean. Shires. Uh, collectively, Europe and Canada calls them provinces. Provinces, there you go. Provincial capital, province. Here we have states. Uh, Cities, towns, counties. Counties making up the state. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, of course, in, in, the, in the very congested northeast, we have boroughs, town, which are towns in the county, which make up the state. So. But, um, you know, isn't it funny how um, the Duck Dynasty reality show was created after the popularity of Swamp People? You have Swamp People, which are it's based on Louisiana Bayou folk living off the uh, wildlife in the swamp. Same and, thing the ducks do. And you have the two, the, you have those brothers with the long beards on uh, the Swamp People Is show. Top? Yeah, they look just like them. Then all of a sudden, this Duck Dynasty show was created. So I think it was a spin-off of Swamp People. Because it became cool, you know, to uh, to watch hillb hillbillies interact. They were very, very entertaining. Well, why didn't Swamp People go over big? They were, no, they're popular. Yeah? yeah. What channel is it on, a and &E? I think it's on, no, I think it's on History. Oh. I think. Yes. History or true TV? Problem with cable is there's too many stinking stations. Hundreds. How the hell are you going to get a lot of uh, viewers and listeners and etc.? Well, you got. And, and there's such a thing as too much choice. You know? I think. Too much choice. You know what I think? Since there are hundreds of stations, I think that all the progressives should get together collectively. And I mean the progressive leaders, your Ralph Naders, you know, Gary Null, Jerry Brown, whatever, whatever. Get together and, uh, and acquire one of those hundreds supposedly of cable Al stations. Let me finish. Supposedly Al Gore did that. Well, where is it? I don't know. You mean uh, Al Gore who... Uh, had some uh, questionable investments. There was some, something was real fishy about his green movement. What green movement? The one he was blabbering about in his books, or whatever. Well, we didn't get one. Well, there was no green movement from Al Gore. Maybe it was the green movement that Al Gore was involved in is the green that goes into his, uh, his pocket. He made a killing on the, the, the selling the station. That's what he meant by your green movement. Exactly. Anyway. Last one here. Last one, because we are we ran over time, right? Postal regulators on Tuesday approved a temporary price hike of three cents for a first class step. What else is new? It never goes down. It says temporary. Are you saying the government lies? Sometimes. Bringing the 
charge to 49 cents a letter. Wow, almost 50 cents. In an effort to help the Postal Service recover from severe mail decreases brought on by the 2008 economic downturn. Yeah, well, plus online, uh, not, well, the parcel companies make out like a bandit. Uh, uh, they may shopping. work out like a bandit, but the post office does more work than all three of them put together. That is very true, and I, I, I posted something like that on, on the Progressive Discussions group there you go. and page. There you go. Many consumers will not feel the price increase immediately. Forever stamps, good for first class postage. Whatever the future rate can be purchased at the lower price until the new rate is effective January 26th. By the way, I got a bunch, I got about 89, 46 stamps. Now, now what am I going to have to do, buy three cent stamps to make them good? That's why, why do you think, why do you think I don't, the reason is that I don't buy a book of stamps. This is the reason because they, they jack up the price often and I don't want to be stuck with a book of obsolete stamps. Now I have to go buy a bunch of uh, penny stamps to slap on to make it 49 cents. I don't do that because I don't buy them by the book. I just, I don't really know. Well, you can buy the forever stamps. I, I do, good. I do right. mostly online. These are a gift. I do mostly online purchasing and transactions. I use me debit card. I don't <laughs> mail things out the old-fashioned way with, it, with postage. So I do not have a need very often for stamps. But I do not want to be in that situation. You know what I wish the, the government does that would really make life nicer? Mm. Is to discontinue pennies. They want to do that. The cockroach of all money. The uh, Congress wouldn't let them. Melt that copper down, man. Well, it takes it. It costs more to make the pennies. What? The, because they, they're a nuisance. Well, but the Congress won't let them do it. The same thing. The Congress will not let them um, not have to pay for those stupid tanks that the Pentagon does not want. What about the aircraft? The military aircraft? I think from Lockheed that they never used. That's the point. Billions of dollars. It, this is why Republicans are not progressive people. Because there's never any progress except filling their wallets, their bank accounts. There's never any real progress hmm. with them. Because they're not a progressive uh, uh, party. They're not problem solvers. That's correct. They, they are they hold the line, so supposedly, mm -hmm. a party that holds the line. They do not believe in, in innovation, they, and you know it has to be proven first. Innovation. Yeah. Now, how the hell do you prove innovation? You have to have the innovation. It has to run for a year or two or whatever to prove itself. Well, if you don't support the innovation, how the hell does it ever prove itself? Got a point. Wasn't that a Johnny Cash song, Hold the Line? No, Walk the Line. I walk the line. Walk the line. I walk the line. Oh, do, 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 do. Back to the stamp. The higher rate... Stamp your ass. ...is intended to last no more than two years. Allowing the Postal Service to recoup $2.8 billion in losses, but inflation over the next 24 months may make it permanent. No kidding. No kidding. No kidding. So we got one more you said? One more because it has to do with Christ Mass. Or actually Santa Claus. We, we might as well keep it all together that we are still within the uh, 2013 holiday season. A suburban Albuquerque teacher told a black student that Santa Claus is white. <laughs> He has been placed on administrative leave. <laughs> the teacher's comments came after the students at Cleveland High School were told they could come to class.
class dressed as Santa, an elf or a reindeer. I wonder if Chris Christie dressed as Santa this year. <laughs> Michael, or, you know, by the way, he don't look like he's lost anymore. Yeah, what happened to the uh, the, 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 the bypass surgery, what do you call it, the stapling? Yeah. Uh, gastric bypass surgery he had. You know, there's a stupid doctor that is surgically applying some, some sort of a little mesh to the back of the tongue for weight loss oh, because uh, the people won't be able to eat like a, a big piece of meat or a chunk of meat or something like that. So they lose 20, 30 pounds. What the? Well, Just got the carbohydrates! Uh, these people do not have to deprive themselves of food and, and starve themselves with with a, a radical, um, drastic uh, portion reduction. It's what you eat that's hurting you. It's the simple carbs, the refined carbohydrates. White sugar and white flour is the enemy. Incredible. And there's some nutritional supplements that could help you uh, with your cravings and addiction for carbohydrates. If they're not going about it the right way. Ah. The teacher's comments came after students at Cleveland School were told to address the Santa Alpha Ranger. Michael Rougier said when his ninth grade son Christopher arrived with a Santa hat and a beard The teacher asked, don't you know Santa Claus is white? Don't you know Santa Claus doesn't Why exist? Why are you wearing that? The incident came in the same week that Fox News Channel's Megyn Kelly stirred controversy by saying Santa Claus and Jesus were white. So, oh yeah, so Fox News believes Jesus was a Caucasian? That's correct. That's correct. Why? Because Hollywood, every time Hollywood makes a Jesus or Bible movie, that Jesus is automatically a Caucasian. Well, he so, may they, been, so they believe it. He may have been a light-skinned Jew, but he was a Jew. He was from the, the Middle East. He was of... So I'm of sure a, he was of swarthy or whatever they call it, you know? Would, no, Not a light complexion. No, so he per se. Be olive... Huh. Or brown skin, or olive. He could have been olive skinned uh, with with dark brown or black. Yeah, they did eat a lot of olives back. Dark then. brown hair and dark eyes. What? They did eat a lot of olives back then. That has nothing to do with the pigmentation. I know, but that's why I put it in there. I like olives actually. <laughs> with the pimento inside? No, this is a Spanish. No, I like I like cured olives. You know the, the the ones that are a little salty the and they're all wrinkled, and they and they 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 come off the the, the seed very easily. I wanted to do experiment. Oil once. cured olives. That's it. I wanted to do an experiment once because I'm not sure that I would like olives because my only experience with olives is the pimento ones, and I do not care for those. If you like at all, if you like, let me let me think here. I like if, olive you, olive oil. if you like avocado, you'll you will like olives. I haven't eaten too many avocados in my life. Um, okay. Does the other people in your household like olives? Yes, they do. Why don't you try a couple? I said I wanted to, to make an experiment, and something occurred that didn't allow me to do it. You go to they sell them at the deli. Yeah. And. Uh, Uh, they have a mixed, my, my sister buys the mixed uh, medley of, of olives. You got black olives, black olives green olives, green olives with oil cured, with just uh, uh -huh. pickled olives. With, and you just try one of each. There's generally three of them. Well, hopefully someday I will continue with that experiment. One is green and green, pickled, and firm. Pickled? Well, you know. Oh, but the, uh, in brine and dill? Yeah, 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 whatever. Listen, one is large and green and on the firm side. 
One is large and black and very soft. Ooh. It comes right off the seed, like real quick. And one is small and, and black and, and wrinkled. That's the cured one. Try one of each. And the worst thing that can happen is you'll say, you know what? This is not for me. That's all. Mm. Or I love it. Mm -hmm. I love mushrooms. That's why I'm a fun guy. I hate mushrooms. Now you don't uh, see. Doctor Bill doesn't like anything green. He does. He won't eat kale or spinach or broccoli or or Brussels sprouts Ooh. or anything like that. He doesn't like the foods that are most healthy. Exactly. Unless it's in a pill form. So the only way he he'll take greens chlorophyll is if he takes them in capsule or pill, like yeah. you'll like yeah, yeah. like a spirulina or a chlorella or a chlorophyll, chlorophyll yes. or whatever. Whatever. You know, he'll do that. Yeah. But you don't like split pea soup with smoked ham? Um. Uh, well, the nah. smoked ham kind of like flavors it. You know? Nah, not anymore. I used to have it as a kid, along with tomato soup. I don't care for that anymore either. In my, pressure in my pressure cooker, I made uh, pinto beans Ooh. with uh, smoked kielbasa from Ooh. the uh, Polish uh, market. For, for That's flavor. good with kidney beans, too. The white ones. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, or, yeah. Well, or it, even cannellinis. Well, any, any, any legume tastes great with smoked uh, meat. I mean, for flavoring. You know, kielbasa. I mean, kielbasa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, that wraps it up, right? Wrapped. It's a wrap. That's a wrap. Uh, dieters, I mean, you know, I was talking to my friend about these New Year's resolutions. Actually, I first read it from Lionel. Uh -huh. And Lionel says, you know you're not going to keep the New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Why do something positive for yourself only after New Year's Eve. Why not do it any time of the year? Start something positive for yourself. Make the change. Uh, don't pork up and get sloppy and blame it on the holidays and then do something about it in January, mm. like exercise and uh, 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 changing your eating habits mm. or quitting a bad habit. Ah. No, no. Do it. Just do it. Don't yep. just talk about it. You know it. how they're quitting a bad habit uh, called smoking now? Yeah, they got an electronic, electronic cigarette. cigarette. Now yeah. what happens? What are they puffing? They're puffing water vapor. What does that do in terms we don't of, know yet. of a nicotine addiction? How does that create Hopefully, a nicotine addiction? Hopefully. It weans you off the cigarette. But your your if your body but we don't know yet because there are no uh, studies. But if your body is going through the this nicotine withdrawal and you're freaking out because you need you need your fix of nicotine. Mm. How the hell does blowing on steam water vapor do anything? Going to no. do anything? No. You still well, that's, need. That's what the problem is right now. It is not. It is not certain that it is weaning the people off of cigarettes. You that's need, the point. You need the patch. There are homeopathic products that are great for quitting smokers. One is made by Boric and Taffel called Smoke Free. Uh, it's it's a formula. There's a, there's a particular B vitamin that helps, from what I understand. Uh, Niacinamide, right? Nice. Yeah, there's Niacinamide. a particular yeah. Nicotin, nicotin A. Now which I what? think that's vitamin B three, which would be niacin. Nicotin, niacinamide. Nicotinate nicotin nicotin is a form of niacin. I think so. Niacin amide is the is the niacin that flush. does not give you the flush. Does not symptom. give the flush. Flush free. Flush free uh, 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 niacin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't take a colon cleanser and, I used and be, have it be flush free. Back in the seventies, seventies early eighties. Yeah. Uh, I was not a breakfast eater at that time. <clears throat> no, neither am I. So I used to have to go babysit for my girlfriend's daughter. While the girlfriend went to work. How old was the daughter? Was she uh, uh, 18? Uh, maybe uh, 9, uh, 10, 11. Oh, okay. Still I thought in maybe school. you were. <laughs> and uh, my breakfast consisted of like six or seven Ritz crackers. 
No, they weren't even cheese. It's not. Or and then, of course, I would take my B vitamins and my my vitamins, and then I take the extra hundred milligrams of niacin, and then I would flush. And I felt like I had a sunburn, you know. But I I did that every every morning. On an empty stomach, yeah. you get the flush. If you buffer it, you you can avoid it, you know. But uh, if you had an empty stomach, because I didn't eat the Ritz crackies basically at that time. I had to wait a while. I went after I got well, up. The more to actually eat the, the more hydrochloric acid present in the stomach, I believe, the greater the flush. Like, Maybe. Like if you're. Uh, if you're if you're the type that's sensitive to carbohydrates and you you need more protein, like you you get a, a, you experience a greater flush in the niacin than the those that yeah, are. Well, not it didn't last uh, too long. You know, okay. But, uh, but anyway, there are natural ways to deal with the smoking habit, and of course, finding out what is stressing you in your life is very important in uh, dealing with obesity and uh, dealing with uh, 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 chain smoking because it's the stress that is feeding the habit, like the, 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 the deep down root cause of why you are forming this habit to begin with. Why is it getting worse? It's stress induced quite often. You know, like, like insomnia might be stress induced, but anyway. This, uh, this has been a very unique and invigorating progressive discussions. It, 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 I, I'm glad we covered a lot of real deep uh, religious and uh, mm. psychological um, uh, mumbo, -jumbo. Sub mumbo jumbo subjects here because it, it's very applicable. I wonder if uh, to to this time of year. Yes, exactly. But I wonder if uh, anyone comes along and uh, wishes to critique something on the show. I wish they would uh, 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 concentrate on the content, please. Listen. Okay? I, I'm going to put it to you then simple. Then I will respect I, your criticism. I'm going to put it to you simple. There are people out there who do not focus on the content. They focus on uh, uh, how I'm dressed or how the studio looks or, oh, you're not in a state-of-the-art uh, like MSNBC or Fox News, you don't have expensive lights and and you're not in a, a, a studio that costs a lot of money and blah 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 and your cameras don't cost uh, several thousand dollars each if not more. Those people, <coughs> in order to have the money for that kind of decor and, and in the broadcasting environment, you, you need sponsors. As soon as you bring in sponsors, that means corporations. As soon as you bring them in, that means uh, it's censored. The show has to be censored. It, it's FCC control. The corporate total line, baby. The corpor corporations have to approve of the content, correct? Of the show. I don't. I'm a. I, I was always a very independent person. I cannot. I cannot bite my tongue and pretend. You know what I mean? I have to be honest with you. So if you want the honesty and you want the uncensored, uh, uh, unrehearsed, ad-libbed kind of broadcasting that we do, where nothing is planned, we just have a very general uh, uh, topic, theme that we, we, we go over. But as far as the content of the show, it's completely unrehearsed and, and ad-libbed. So in order to have this, we cannot have sponsors except our own agenda, which is newsletter censored. So this is the reason why we're not sitting pretty in, in the state-of-the-art studio. So if you if you uh, if you're watching us for the content, then you're fine. If you're not paying attention to the content, like if they happen to be a right-wing uh, teabagger troll that just wants to instigate and, and criticize, yeah. then you're not going to listen. Bother. 
and bother us, you're not going to listen to the content. You are simply going to nitpick. Okay. So don't That's bother. It. Don't That's bother. It. We're not interested. We're not interested. So, but please, if you're if you have anything uh, constructive to uh, contribute, feel free to message us on YouTube, on Facebook. Go to the Facebook uh, group, Progressive Discussion. Go to our Facebook Facebook page, also Progressive Discussions. And uh, I'm there, of course, Mega Life 21. And feel free to to slug it out with our other members. <coughs> the group's growing real fast. Ooh. It definitely is. And um, that's all I can say. Happy New Year. 2014 be safe don't drive drunk mm. stay alive and uh, it's gonna be cold New Year's Eve at uh, 42nd Street buddy I won't be there those poor people they gotta hold their pee pee in that kind of weather oh come on you can't you can't stay bring at a, home. you can't bring a, a bottle with you or, or uh, or uh, uh, wear it depends or no a bottle I guess you can wear it depends hey uh -huh. you know what in some some clever person invented a a f faux what's what's something that's phony fox faux faux a a faux uh, a golf club putter which is not a golf club putter at all it is a receptacle for urine and what, what you do is you make believe you're putting something on the ground you put your back to the to the public Oh, and you look like it makes it look like you're practicing your your putting golf swing, and, and what you're doing is you you unzip your pantaloons, you're unloading, baby, and you're peeing into the uh, into the putter. You're peeing into the putter, and uh, you're what a putter peer? Putter peer. What a clever invention! <laughs> Very nice. Happy New Year! What a clever invention, Doctor yeah. Bill. We'll see you in. 2014. 2014. God willing. Bye bye. And the creek don't rise. Yes. Because we have a lot of rain tomorrow. Happy days are here again. Is, is, that, a, is that a New Year's Eve song? Happy no, days that's are here. a 1929 here. song. Happy days are here again. Yeah, the Republicans saying that. Well, it'll be happy days are here again in 2014 if the Congress turns uh, Democrat. And, and and the House and the Senate and the White House is all is not Republican controlled at all. Yeah, maybe we'll get something done. Maybe. Well, yeah. Anytime you have campaign contributions, you have money in politics. Or should I say politics? Whatever. Whatever. Get money. the get the money out of politics, people. <laughs>